Bienvenidos a nuestro tiempo de estudio bíblico. Welcome to the time of Bible study. Hoy vamos a comenzar la segunda carta a Timoteo. Today we'll start uh, the second letter of Timothy. Y tomaremos dos semanas, hoy y la semana siguiente. And we will take in total two weeks. Today this, this is the first lesson and next week the second lesson. Como siempre, no es una mirada teológica, sino una mirada para poder entender lo que el apóstol escribía. And as we say always, it's not a theological uh, way of view or of understanding, but it's a way that we can understand easily. Y nuestras lecciones solamente duran 15 minutos. And our lessons are only 15 minutes long. Pero se va al doble porque estamos predicando con traducción. But it gets to 30 minutes because we are translating. Entre la primera carta y la segunda carta eh, a Timoteo no sabemos cuánto tiempo pasó. Uh, between the first and the second letter to Timothy, we don't know how long it, it passed between, uh, between them. Pero sí sabemos que esta es la última carta que el apóstol Pablo escribió desde la prisión antes de ser decapitado. But we, we, we do know that it's the last letter that the, the apostle Paul uh, wrote before he was uh, beheaded. Y esta es la última carta de lo que le llaman las cartas pastorales. And this is the last letter of the uh, of all the pastoral letters. Ahora vamos a ver cuál es la situación de Pablo al momento de escribir esta carta. Now let's see what's the, the Paul's situation when he's writing this letter. Y esto lo escribe el segundo de Timoteo capítulo 2 versículos 9 y 10. And this is found in 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 9 and 10. For which I am suffering even to the point of being changed like a criminal. But God's word is not changed. Therefore I endure everything for the sake of the elect, that they too may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. Pablo está otra vez en la Paul is in jail again. Algunos se preguntan por qué tantas veces en la cárcel. Some people ask themselves why he has been too many times in prison. First, we can quote uh, the words of the Lord. In Acts chapter 9, verse 16, Jesus dijo, Porque yo le mostraré cuánto hay que padecer por causa de mi nombre. Jesus said, I will show him, I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. Esa una de las partes. Ahora veamos la otra parte. Now let's see the second part. Segundo es porque de esta forma le pudo predicar a reyes y a gobernantes del Imperio Romano. In this way he could uh, he, he preached to kings, to the governments and to the uh, to, uh, from the, uh, the Roman kingdom. Que de otra forma nunca hubiera llegado hasta ellos con el evangelio. That he could have, he couldn't have done it in other ways. Así que las causas de que Pablo estuviera en la cárcel no era solamente porque tenía que sufrir. So the reasons that he was in, in prison, it, it was not only because he had to suffer. Porque él había sido un perseguidor de la iglesia. Because he, he has uh, persecuted the church before. Sino para llevar el evangelio ante los gobernantes y reyes de Roma. But to, uh, to preach the gospel to those, to those kings and queens. Por eso le explica, yo estoy preso, pero la palabra de Dios no está presa. That's why he says that I'm being changed, but the God's word is not chained. El apóstol Pablo ganó a mucha gente eh, desde altos rangos eh, eh, del ejército romano para el Señor. The apostle Paul preached to uh, so many uh, people from the high society and from the uh, and soldiers. Aunque esto le costó su mala reputación. But this uh, cost him his uh, reputation. Porque tantas veces en prisión le trajo mala reputación al apóstol Pablo. Because he was too many times in prison. Por eso muchos de sus seguidores comienzan a apartarse de él, comienzan a dejarlo. That's why uh, lots of um, followers of Paul, they, they, they start to leave him. Esto lo vemos en el capítulo 4, versículo 16. We can see this in, uh, in chapter 4, and verse 16. And my first defense, no one come to my support. But everyone deserted me. May it not be held against them. Lo dejan por temor a ser Some of them living because they, they are uh, they're fearing to be jailed. No ir a la they didn't want to be in prison. La de ese no es como la de hoy. Because the prison in that time is not the same as, uh, as today. La de hoy camas, todo. In the prison of today they have beds, they had everything. 
Pero en ese tiempo las cárceles eran frías, húmedas y vacías. But in that time the the, the, the prisons were uh, cold, they, they, they were uh, not as we had today. Entonces nadie quería ir a prisión. So nobody wanted to go to prison. Y también sus colaboradores lo dejaban por la reputación social que tenía el apóstol Pablo. And all, all those people that helped him, they lived him because he was not in a good uh, social position. He was considered by the society uh, as a criminal. He even writes about it and he says that I'm, I'm chained like, like a criminal. Ahora mire lo que escribe en el capítulo 3, versículo 11 y 12. Now let's see what he wrote, what, what he writes in chapter 3, in verse 11 and 12. Persecutions, sufferings, what kinds of things happened to me in Antioch, Iconium, and Lystra. The persecutions I endured, yet the Lord rescued me from all of them. In fact, everyone who wants to live godly in life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. Él describe un poco lo que es el evangelio para él y cómo él lo entiende. He describes how is the gospel uh, for him in his view. Entonces, muchos predican hoy un evangelio barato. So, uh, uh, lots of people today they um, they preach a really cheap gospel. ¿Qué es un evangelio barato? And what, what, what do you have? What, what do I want to mean with this? Todo te va a ir bien. That everything they they tell you everything will will go well. Todo te va a salir bien. Everything will go well to you. Con Jesús no hay problemas. With Christ Jesus there is no worries. Eso es un evangelio barato. That's a cheap gospel. Entonces cuando la gente comienza a tener dificultades. So when the people start to suffer, uh, to go through hard times. Dice, pero esto no es lo que me dijeron. They start to say, but this is not what they told me. Yo acepté a Jesús en mi corazón. Y, y esto sigue, los problemas siguen igual. I accepted Jesus in my heart as my savior, but the, the problems are still coming. Entonces la gente comienza a alejarse de Dios. So the people start uh, uh, going far away from the church and from God. Entonces Pablo dice, si quiere vivir rectamente el evangelio. So the, the apostle Paul says that everyone who wants to live a good life. Vas a ser perseguido. They will be persecuted. Quizás no te pongan en la cárcel. Maybe they will not uh, put, in, uh, put you in jail. Según donde vivas. It depends on where you live. Hay países donde ser cristiano te lleva a la cárcel. There are uh, there are countries with that if you're Christian they take you to, to prison. Pero quizás estés en una sociedad donde no te llevan a la cárcel por ser cristiano. But maybe you're uh, you're in a society that they don't take you to prison maybe because you're a Christian. Pero sí serás perseguido por causa de tu fe. But we, you will be persecuted because of your faith. It, Pablo le dice a Timoteo, el evangelio que abrazaste te va a traer dificultades. The, the apostle Paul is, is selling to uh, Timothy the, the gospel you learned yeah, will, uh, will make you being persecuted. El evangelio que estás predicando te va a traer problemas con la sociedad, con la familia y con las autoridades. The gospel you preach, the gospel you received will, uh, will be uh, against the society uh, and the beliefs of all, everyone. How different to the gospel that is being preached today. The apostle Paul says you will be persecuted. And some of the, some of, the uh, of, of people uh, nowadays, they, they, they preach everything will go uh, well. Escribe lo que significa muchas veces ser cristiano. So in this letter, uh, the apostle Paul writes uh, uh, lots of times uh, how is to being a Christian. Y dice tienes que estar preparado para esto. And he says you you have to be prepared for this. Porque va a haber momentos difíciles. Because there will be hard times. Ahora miremos la pala las palabras de Jesús. Now let's see the words of Jesus. En Mateo capítulo 10 versículos 35 y 36, miren lo que decía Jesús. In Matthew chapter uh, 10 and verse 35 and 36. For I have come to turn a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies will be the members of his own household. Wow. Dice, he venido a traer um, división entre la madre y la hija. He says, I, I, have to, I have come to turn a man against his father. División entre la familia. There is division uh, in, in, in families. ¿Por qué 
dice esto Jesús? Why, why does Jesus says this? Porque cuando comienzas a seguir a Jesús a muchos en tu casa le molesta. Because when you start following Jesus, Lord, uh, you will affect your family. Porque quizás eres el único cristiano de tu familia. And it might be uh, affect negatively to the family because you're the only Christian in your family. Entonces tu casa comienza la mayor dificultad de persecución. So in so your family is, uh, becomes the first uh, the first thing to be, uh, to persecute you. Has decidido seguir a Jesús. You have decided to follow Jesus. Pero toda tu familia está en contra. But all your family is against against it. Entonces se cumple la palabra de Jesús. So the word of God is fulfilled. Que tus enemigos son los de tu propia casa, los de tu propia familia. That your enemies will be the members of his of your own household. Muchas personas no soportan esto. Lots of people they they, they can't take it. Y terminan abandonando la fe. And they leave uh, the faith. Para no tener conflictos con su familia. So they don't have any conflicts with their families. Ahora Jesús sigue diciendo en los versículos 37 y 39. Mira lo que dice. Now Jesus keeps saying in the verse 37 and 39. Anyone who loves their father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Any who, anyone who loves their son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Whoever does not take up their cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds their life will lose it. And whoever loses it, their life, their life for my sake will find it. Hay muchos que sufren persecución. There are lots of people that are uh, suffering persecution. Los que son de otras religiones. The people that are from other religions. Sufren mucha persecución. They suffer lots of uh, persecution. Y a muchos les cuesta inclusive la vida. And to, to lots of them, they even cost them the, their lives. Y, y muchos hermanos padecen esto. And lots of brothers and sisters they uh, they um, living this. Y, y muchos de nosotros también pa padecemos esto. And most of us we also uh, uh, live this. Entonces Jesús nos advirtió no va a ser fácil. So that's what the Apostle Paul uh, and Jesus told us it's it's not going to be uh, easy. Vas a tener que padecer una persecución quizás en tu casa. You will be persecuted. You might be persecuted in your house. Pero Jesús dice, ten en cuenta una cosa. But Jesus is saying, be uh, notice one thing. El que ama más a padre o a madre más que a mí no es digno de mí, dice Jesús. Anyone who loves their father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. ¿Por, por qué dice eso? And, and why does he da, uh, says this? Porque muchas veces vas a tener que pesar a quién amas más. Because you will sometimes you will have to uh, to, to realize who do you love more. Si amas más a Jesús o amas más a tu familia. Do you love more Jesus or do you love more your family? Yo conocí un amigo que tuvo que irse de la casa. Por Jesús. I, I, I have a friend that he had to leave the, his house because he loved Jesus. Su le su fe. Because the, his family, they, they, they were against it. So because the family was against his faith, the only, the only thing he could, he could do he was to leave. And for lots of years, for many years, he was, uh, he was away, far away from, uh, from his family. But he was always uh, praying for them. Until his family understood that, that they couldn't be uh, far away from each other. And God made the miracle to, uh, to uh, make them come together. And, and the family received Jesus. Ahora, Timoteo, eh, capítulo 2, versículo 3 y versículo 5, dice esto. Now, see, uh, second of Timothy, in chapter 2, and verse 3 to 5. John with me in suffering, like a good soldier of Christ Jesus. No one serving as a soldier gets entangled in civilian affairs, but rather tries to please his commanding officer. Similarly, anyone who competes as an athlete does not receive the victor's crown except by competing according to the rules. Toma como ejemplo dos personajes. He um, takes as an example two characters. Primero, el soldado. First, the soldier. Pablo pone bien en claro que desde el momento que recibimos a Jesús nos convertimos en soldados. He, he really specifies that once we accept Christ Jesus our, as our Savior, we, uh, we instantly become a soldier of God. Y tu vida a and your life starts changing. Pero no 
but not only because you have left uh, some things behind or left uh, the life you lived before most of people think that the gospel is only that I don't I don't do any more the things I do uh, before now I'm a, I'm a good person but Jesus goes for uh, even further he says now you're a soldier now you're you are you 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 be uh, you're a, a god's uh, soldier now you have to please the king and your life has to be like a soldier's life and and the second thing the second character is that uh, we are athletes si quieres el premio, tiene que ser disciplinado. If you want to receive the victory's crown, you have to be disciplined. Porque dice que aquel que corre la carrera, dice, y es disciplinado, gana el premio. Because he, he says that uh, uh, if you're uh, the athlete that competes and he's, uh, he, he's good at it. Ahora todo corredor debe correr según la, las reglas de la carrera. But the, 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 every, every athlete has to run the, uh, this race but with the rules. No puede correr según sus propias reglas. They have to compete according to the rules. Porque las reglas ya están dictadas por el juez. Because the rules are already uh, given by, the, by, uh, by all the judges. Así es el evangelio. Uh, the, and, and it's, the, the gospel is like this. No puedes correr con tus propias reglas. You can't compete with your, according to your own rules. Tienes que correr conforme a las reglas del reino de los cielos. You have to compete according to the, the heavenly rules. Es decir, no puedo vivir como yo quiera. So I, I can't live like, like however, however, however you want. Debo vivir según como Jesús dice que yo debo vivir. I have to live according to what God is telling me, me how to live my life. Y esas son las reglas. And that, those are the rules. Pablo aclara a Timoteo, no será fácil, Timoteo. The Paul, Paul specifies to Timothy, Timothy, it will not be easy. Pero necesitas obedecer como un soldado. But you have to obey as a, like a soldier. Necesitas entrenar y correr como un atleta. And you have to train and to compete as an athlete. Ahora, qué difícil. Now, how hard is this? El apóstol Pablo acá me está hablando de persecución. Now, here in this letter, the apostle Paul is uh, writing about persecution. Me está hablando de que debo obedecer como un soldado. He's talking to me that I have to be uh, like a soldier. Siempre listo. Always ready. Debo prepararme y correr como un atleta. That I have to be prepared and have to train and compete as an athlete. Eso es muy difícil. That's really difficult. ¿Cómo hago para hacer eso? And how can I do it? El secreto para poder soportar y seguir adelante. The secret to uh, to fight against it and to uh, keep going. Está en el capítulo 1, versículos 6 al 8. It's in chapter 1, verse 6 and to 8. For this reason, I remind you to find into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For the Spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but to give us power, love, and self-discipline. You have to find into flame the gift of, the gift of God. Hay fuego del Espíritu de Dios en tu corazón. The, 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 the fire of God is in your heart. Tienes que avivarlo. You, you have to uh, fall into the flame. ¿Cómo lo vivo? And how I do it? Orando, leyendo la palabra. Praying, uh, reading the, the, the word of God. Manteniendo comunión con tus hermanos. Keeping the communion with your uh, brothers and sisters. Así te mantiene fuerte. Now, y, 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 with that you become stronger. Ese es el secreto del apóstol. That's the secret of the apostle Paul. Por eso él puede decir, he acabado la carrera, he cumplido todo lo que Dios me ha dicho. That's why he, he, he could say, I, I, I finished my, the, to compete and I, I've, I've done everything. A pesar de la persecución, de la cárcel, de los castigos, él pudo soportar. Even though the persecution and everything bad that he happened to him, he could finish the, this race. No era un and he was not a special man. Era un como he was a man like everyone else. Se a sí como un and he describes himself as a weak human being. Pero con el poder del de Dios. But with the power of the Holy Ghost. Por eso dice que el amor nos da poder. That's why he says that the love, the, the love gives us power. Poder habla de fuerza. And the, uh, when he talks about power, it means a strength de una fuerza sobrenatural. of a super, supernatural strength. Él nos da fuerza, nos da amor. He gives us uh, strength, he gives us love. 
para hacer las cosas no por obligación. To do the things not because we are obligated to do it. No solamente por obedecer como un soldado. Not only to obey like a soldier. Sino que obedecemos porque amamos a Jesús. But to obey because we love Jesus. Obedecemos su palabra porque le amamos. We obey his words because we we love him. Y sabemos que todo lo que él nos dice es para nuestro propio bien. And we know that everything that he says to us is because he wants us to be good, to be well. Poder, amor y autodisciplina. Strength, love and, uh, and self-discipline. Es el secreto que el apóstol Pablo tenía para poder alcanzar las cosas. It's the secret that the apostle Paul had to reach his goals. Poder, amor y autodisciplina. Love, strength and self-discipline. Es lo que te da el Espíritu de Dios en tu vida. It's what the Holy Ghost gives you in your life. Es el secreto. That's the secret. Ahora, el apóstol Pablo cambia de una forma tremenda en la carta en la segunda carta. Now, the apostle Paul uh, gives a, a turn in, while writing the letter. Y va a introducir un tema que no lo ha tocado el primer Timoteo. And he will introduce a new theme that he didn't uh, write about in the first letter. Y describe a las personas cómo serán en los últimos días. And he, is, and he describes how the people of uh, the last times will uh, behave. Primero va a describir la sociedad. First, he will describe the society, ¿Cómo va a ser la sociedad? how the society will be in the last en el time. 3, versículo, de 1 al 4, esto. In chapter 3, in verse 1 to 4, well, mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, no lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, love, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. ¿Se habré equivocado el apóstol Pablo? Ha, have the apostle Paul um, uh, uh, write this wrong? ¿Es así nuestra sociedad de hoy? Is our society like this? Claro que sí. Yes, it is. Estaba inspirado por el Espíritu de Dios. The apostle Paul was writing this while being inspired by the Holy Ghost. Y el apóstol Pablo vio la sociedad como iba a ser. And the, and the apostle Paul saw the society how it was going to be in the last days. Es tremendo la perfección como describe a la sociedad de hoy. And it's amazing how he specifies every word and it's exactly what it, the society of today is. Ahora dice algo más de ciertas personas. Now he says something else about some people. In verse 5, having a form of godliness but denying its power, have, have nothing to do with such people. Dice que va a haber gente que tendrán apariencia de piedad. This, he says that there will be people having a form of godliness. ¿Qué es esto, piedad? And what is this godliness? En el griego, el original, la palabra es eusebia. In the original uh, word, in the Greek, it's, uh, the, the word is eusebia. Significa respeto y reverencia hacia Dios. It means respect uh, to, to God. Dice que primero describe haber un montón de personas con características malas. First he describes all the people that was going to have negative behavior. Pero va a haber un cierto grupo de personas que tienen buenas características. But there will be a certain group of people that will have a good characteristics. Y estas personas dice que aparentarán que tienen respeto y reverencia hacia Dios. But he says that these people will have a form of godliness. Pero dice algo más. But he says something else. Dice sus hechos negarán esos. Have nothing to do with such people. En la versión española dice negará la eficacia de. In the Spanish version it says that they, they, they will deny the efficiency of it. O sea que son personas que aparentemente tienen respeto hacia Dios. So it, it means that there will be people that are they will we will look that they uh, respect Jesus. Pero sus hechos, sus obras dicen lo contrario. But their works, their acts they will uh, deny it. O sea, muy lindo de Dios. So they will talk beautiful things about God. Que aman a Dios. They will say that we, they will love oh, God. Yo amo a Dios. They, say, they will say that they love God. Pero sus obras serán a sus But their works and their acts will be different. Por eso Jesús dijo, Por sus frutos los conoceréis. That's why the, the apostle said, by, your, by their works you will know them. 
Entonces, no solamente debes escuchar lo que te dicen. So you, you, you don't have to always only listen to what they say. Debes mirar lo que ellos hacen. But look what they are doing. Para ver si sus obras son iguales a sus palabras. To see if their works are the same as what they say. También habla de la iglesia. Now he also talks about the church. Capítulo 4, versículo 3 y 4. In chapter 4 and verse 3 and 4. For the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine, instead to suit their own desires. They will gather around them a great number of, of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. Parece que el apóstol Pablo estuviera mirando el siglo XXI. It's like the apostle Paul was looking into the into this uh, year, into this uh, into this uh, century. En ese tiempo no sufrirán la sana doctrina. In in that in this time they will not uh, they would not put up with with sound doctrine. Significa no soportarán una doctrina sólida. Yes, it says that they they will uh, they will can't they, they won't be able to take the uh, the doctrine the truth. Cuando le quieras enseñar la Biblia, and when, when you want to teach them the Bible, que eres anticuado, they will tell you that you are old. Eso ya pasó de moda. That that's not the things that are going today. O sea, no se, no le eh, dice el apóstol Pablo, no le gustará seguir la doctrina correcta. He says that they will they will uh, they will not want to uh, follow the sound doctrine, the truth. Hoy lo vemos, hay un montón de gente que no le gusta seguir las doctrinas de la iglesia. And we can see it today. There are a lot, so many people that they don't like to follow the, the church doctrine. No siguen las enseñanzas, la, las enseñanzas, enseñanzas bíblicas correctas. They don't follow the, uh, the biblical uh, teaching. En el afán de buscar algo nuevo. But because of their desire to uh, look for something new. Se desvían totalmente de la verdad del evangelio. They go into the opposite way of what's the, of what the truth is. Y es para buscar sus propios beneficios o sus propios deseos. But it's because they want your, uh, their own desires. Y el apóstol Pablo dice buscarán maestros que se junten con ellos. And he keeps saying that they will gather around them. Que hablen lo que ellos quieren oír. That they will say what their itching ears want to hear. Sus oídos de la verdad. And they will turn the ears away from the truth. ¿Qué debe hacer Timoteo? So what, do, what, what does Timothy has to do? Cap capítulo 4, versículo 2 dice que debe hacer. In chapter 4 and verse 2 it says what Timothy must do. Preach the word, be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. A tiempo y afuera de tiempo. Be prepared in season and out of season. O sea, en todo momento. So in every moment, always. Y describe cinco cosas que debe hacer todo buen ministro. And he describes five things that every good minister of the gospel must have. Timoteo, si quiere ser buen ministro, debe hacer estas cinco cosas. He says, Timothy, if you want to be a good, a good pastor, a good minister, you have to have these five things. Because there are people that they, it finds difficult to do some of them. Most of the leaders, uh, they, um, they, they preach, they teach, and they encourage people. Pero nunca corrigen y exhortan. But they never correct the, the wrong works of the people. ¿Por qué? Why? Algunas de razones. Some of the reasons. Primero porque no tienen carácter. First because they don't have the character appropriate to do it. No quieren confrontar a las personas con la palabra de Dios. Second, they don't want to uh, com uh, confront the people with the word of God. Y tercero porque tienen miedo de que la gente se le vaya de la iglesia. And third, uh, because they feared uh, uh, of the people leaving the church. Entonces, si corrigen o exhortan a alguien, las personas se van de la congregación. So, if people get sold off, they they might leave the congregation. Entonces, muchos pastores no quieren pasar por eso. So, lots of, uh, of uh, pastors and leaders they don't want to go through that time, through that moment. Y dicen la típica frase. And they say this sentence. Dejemos que el Espíritu Santo les hable y cambie. Let the Holy Spirit to uh, to correct them. Pero esto se quitan la responsabilidad. But they, what, what they're doing actually is that they're uh, they're leaving their responsibility behind. Sabemos que el Espíritu Santo les habla y los puede hacer cambiar. We know that the uh, Holy Spirit can uh, can make them turn to the uh, to the uh, to the right uh, path. 
Pero es responsabilidad nuestra, dice el apóstol Pablo, exhortarlos. It says, the apostle Paul says that it's our responsibility. Exhortarlo y corregirlo. To rebuke and encourage. Ahora, debo tener en cuenta una cosa muy importante con esto. Now I have to notice something very important with this. No podemos hacerlo en público. We can't do it in public. Delante de toda la gente. Uh, in front of uh, many people. No podemos avergonzar a las personas. We I can't uh, uh, get the people embarrassed. I remember when I was young, when I was a child, I, I remember going to the church. And I, I, I remember that the uh, pastor uh, was uh, rebuking people in the church. Y lo hacía delante de toda la congregación. And he did it in front of the whole congregation. Y esta persona estaba muy avergonzada. And this person was really embarrassed. No podemos hacer esto. We can't do this. Tenemos que traer aparte en privado a la persona. We have to do it. We, we have to bring that person in, 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 in privately. Exhortarlo y corregirlo. Rebuke and encourage it. Y mostrarle el camino correcto. And show and show that person the correct way. Entonces Vamos a, a predicar, a enseñar, a animar en público. So let's, uh, Pero vamos a corregir en privado. So let's preach, teach in public, but then let's rebuke and correct privately. Esa es la tarea de Timoteo y la de todo buen ministro del Evangelio. That's the, that, that's the, the what all, every minister, every leader have, must do. Predica, enseña, corrige, exhorta y alienta. Preach, teach, correct, uh, rebuke and encourage. Por eso el versículo capítulo 3, versículo 16 y 17 dice esto. That's why in verse 3, in, ver, in verse 16 and 17 says the next, All the scripture is God breathed and it's useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting and training in righteousness. So that the servant of God might be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Lo vuelve a repetir otra vez. He repeats it again. La escritura es inspirada por el Espíritu de Dios. All scripture is God breathed. Y es la herramienta para corregir. And is used for to correct. Para instruir. To training in righteousness. Y le dice a Timoteo, es lo que necesitas, no necesitas otra cosa. It's, uh, he's saying that's what you need, you, do, you don't need anything else. ¿Para qué? For what? Para que todo siervo de Dios sea preparado para buena obra. So, every, so that the servant of God might be truly equipped for every good work. Para que los hijos de Dios sean equipados para buena obra. So God children can be prepared. Cuando plantas una plantita pequeña, when you plant a, a flower, la plantita comienza a crecer. The flower starts to grow up. Pero como está débil comienza a doblarse. But because it, it, it's weak, they he, they start to turn. The flower Entonces, starts to turn. El, que, el cuidador de la planta. So this uh, the, the 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 person that takes care of that flower. Tiene que enderezarla. Uh, he, ha he has to make it uh, go in the correct way. Y le tiene que poner un palito. And he has to, uh, to place a stick. Para que la planta pueda crecer recta. So the flower can grow up straight. Si no le pone el palito, Because if, he, if that person doesn't place the stick, la planta crece torcida. the plant will, uh, will grow in another way. Ministros del Señor, Leaders of God, tenemos la responsabilidad. We have the responsibility de poner el palito, to place the, that stick que es la palabra de Dios, that is the word of God that the persons in our congregations can uh, grow up spiritually and as a person in the correct way. Y de esta forma terminamos la primera lección. In, 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 in this way we finish the first lesson. El Evangelio es así. The gospel is this. Y que lo hayas como lo hemos And we hope that you have, you have enjoyed it as we did. Nos vemos la we'll, we'll see you next week. God bless you.